and good day. Today we're having a look at a ridge rider. A butane stove, twin burner one actually. I'll pop this back. And this has uh, been sent to me from Super Cheap for review. So let's have a look at it. It's got a new two stage dual safety cutoff control. So I'm guessing we've got two controls, one left and right. So that's what that is. It's got an overpressure safety gas cutoff device. It's got an overpressure safety canister ejection device. We've got the latest design. It's a dual two burner butane stove. Alloy non-stick cooking plate with flat with fat, not flat, <laughs> with fat collection reservoir. It's hard to read <laughs> when you're on an angle and your glasses aren't the best. We've got um, piezo ignition. We've got a variable heat control, built-in burner windshields, which is rather nice, I think. We've got energy heat output of 8,000 BTUs per burner and a total of 1,600 BTUs combined so that's uh, quite a quite a bit of heat coming out in a small area which I kind of like let's flip this around have a look on that side nothing exciting there nothing exciting there flip around on the back and basically same sort of thing here exactly the same a couple of little pictures on the side showing you the non-stick plate um, it's showing here the canister safety lock this one down here is the um, uh, dual safety lock again uh, what I've got here burner windshield and showing you the two burners and we've got caution down the bottom um, I might zoom in on that a bit because that's that is something that's fairly important I'll see if I can get that a bit better on the there we go is that better now this is very important it's for outdoor use only do not attempt to use this in any enclosed space as it goes on to say down the bottom here carbon monoxide hazard using this appliance in an enclosed space may cause death so please do take note of this do not use in caravans tents marine craft cars mobile homes or similar locations so anything that's enclosed you're risking death if you run this um, so please use it outdoors only as it's intended and you'll be quite safe And uh, this is the instruction manual that comes with the Ridge Rider. So I'll open it up and have a bit of a look. I'll uh, scroll through the pages a bit slow. You, can, of course, can pause it at any time you like and have a bit of a read if there's anything of interest on there that you're curious about. It does have uh, quite an intense list of um, do's and don'ts and bits and pieces and uh, pretty well covers everything that uh, a good guide should. So it's uh, giving you the canister sizes. Um, there's a bit of a startup guide, troubleshooting sort of thing, which most of the manuals seem to have, which is the last page. And then we go to the back cover, which has got the disclaimer. There's a 12 uh, month warranty on the unit itself, so there you go. It's well worth taking your time to read it if you get one of these uh, twin burner butane stoves. Well and truly, you know, take the time to do it. Now I'll just slide this back a fraction and uh, let's see what's inside. What have we got here? Oh, tape on either side it looks like. So I'll grab a bit of tape. There's a bit of tape on that side. What's on the other? There's tape on that too. Oh yeah, a bit of tape. Pretty easy. Oh, there we go. That came, off. that came off a lot easier than I expected. Okay, what do we got now? How do we open this thing? It's got little slider locks on the top as you can see here. So I suppose if we, which way's up? <laughs> that's a good point, I don't know which way's up. Well, let's find out. We'll slide that across, the locks on either side, which I have, and uh, see if I've got it right or if I'm wrong. Oh, there we go, I've got it the right way. How about that? <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> For the first time in ages, I've actually got something the right way up. And as you can see, we've got the instructions. We'll put that aside. A bit of um, foam packing, get that out of the way. And uh, let's pull this out now. What have we got here? That's how does this fit? Okay, that comes up, slide back, and what do we got here? That's the oh, that's the um, the plate. There we go. Let's pull this out. That's uh, as you can hear from that. That's uh, quite substantial. A bit of weight in that actually. I've just been um, having a bit of a look at the instructions. 
Uh, it's interesting that uh, they've got a couple of things in here um, basically saying do not use as a space heater. Why on earth would you want to use this as a space heater? But anyway, it's a warning, don't do it. And another one over the other side here. Do not use this stove to light briquettes or heat beads. I mean, come on, gee, I mean, really? Ah, oh, people are funny. I mean, obviously they've had to put that into the instructions because somebody obviously has attempted it. <laughs> Now, in the instructions, it also says do not operate this device inside the plastic um, carrying case. Um, obviously, there are people out there that have again done that. It's not a clever thing. Plastic and heat do not go very well together. It has a tendency of either catching on fire or melting. So that's another do not do, and they've got that in the instructions. So make certain you read it and follow them carefully. We've got this little duvawaki on the side which you open up. There's a little reset down the bottom here. That's to reset the um, the cartridge if there's a, a bit of an over over pressure sort of situation. It's got uh, instructions down the side on both of the um, the actual burners. Now, in order to put the cartridge in, it must be in the unlock position. If you have it down the bottom here and try and insert the cartridge. It's not going to work, so that must be in the off position. Make certain you've also got the um, the little uh, switch here turned over to off. If you have that turned on, again, you're going to have a few little issues. So it's got some safety precautions inbuilt, which is rather nice. The only thing that I haven't got <laughs> is a gas cartridge to go in it. I've got to go down and buy a couple. Darn, I never thought of it. <laughs> so, yeah, bear with me while I uh, nick out and buy a couple of cartridges. And with the magic of editing, here we go. I've actually picked them up. I went down, picked up four little Ridge Rider gas uh, cartridges, 220 gram each. There's my super cheap receipt, as you can see there. And I paid a whopping great $5.85. That's for four of them. I mean, that's not bad. That's really, well, believe it or not, super cheap. So not that I'm giving them a plug, mind you, but by geez, I am. So the product itself is... Um, pretty inexpensive and uh, obviously I've got Ridge Rider because that's the product I'm using and there are two types of um, gas cartridges that you can use in the cooker um, I just happen to have the instructions here and I will just read them out so you know um, which ones we are meant to be using now the cartridges are uh, UL147B or an EN417. They're the two that are recommended for the machine itself, for the actual cooker. And uh, they do say don't use other ones because uh, if you get something that's not recommended, there's a chance you might get leakage. And leakage represents a mighty big bang if you drop a match to it. Uh, it's not something I'm sure would make your day and uh, probably wreck the uh, cooking for the rest of the day as well. Now, one thing to bear in mind with uh, these gas cartridges it is recommended that you store them outside not in your home so make certain they are you know out in a well ventilated area also disconnect them when you're not using them so in other words take them out of the cooker don't leave them in there if you leave them in the um, cartridges on the side you're asking for trouble so best to be safe and then you can have another barbecue next week rather than finish up in hospital which I don't think you'd enjoy okay we've decided to come for a bit of a barbecue to test out some of the equipment and uh, just have a bit of a look around here for a moment right what we've got here is the um, the little barbecue itself we need to open it up and have a look inside barbecue plate we'll be using in a few minutes okay one thing you must remember you see this little cut out here and this little piece down yonder slots in there and that's um, so when you push down the locking mechanism it slides in position on top there there is a safety cut out on the side there which is a reset but we don't need it at this point so lock that back in position grab our hot plate Pop our hot plate up on top and we're basically ready to get going. Okay, we're just going to put a bit of a light spray over the 
over the surface. It is a non-stick base, but a bit of oil won't go astray. Okay, and uh, to start it up, it's got a piezo ignition system. So that one's going, and we'll turn the other one. Second one's underway, so that's how easy it is to actually turn the uh, switch on. You've got variable control, so you can have one side hot, the other side of the plate at a temp uh, different temperature. Okay, we're just uh, we're going to cook a couple of shazlicks just to make it nice and uh, nice and interesting. So. And we'll get the second one down. Okay, this will take a few minutes to uh, cook, so we'll come back when they're a bit uh, bit browner, as they say. Okay, we're going to um, pop the egg on at the moment. As my wife decided she wanted an egg. Okay, it won't take too long to cook that. Um, you never guess what happened to the other egg. Of course, I didn't do that. You're imagining things. And there we go. We've uh, moved it to the other side. We've got the egg in the ring cooking nicely. Got a bit of a breeze out at the moment, and uh, it seems to be holding up okay. It hasn't blown out. As you can see, we've got a bit of wind whistling through, so the barbie's held up quite well under this. Yeah, they're uh, coming along quite nicely at the moment. The spread of the heat over the burners is quite amazing. We've decided just to use one single burner on the left-hand side. We've turned the right-hand one completely off at this point. And, uh, yeah, very impressed. As you can see, the uh, egg has been removed. My wife is that hungry she wouldn't wait for the shazlicks. <laughs> so she's sitting on the other, other side of the table here enjoying it. Mm, We've got some? <laughs> We've got a nice uh, bit of breeze coming through at the moment and the burner's still staying on, which is great. So actually a lovely uh, area that we're in. I'll move the camera around a little bit and uh, give you a bit of an idea. I'll zoom back out. That's a lake through there, that's Listerfield Lake. Okay, well we've cooked them, uh, checked them with a knife to make certain that they're uh, nicely browned and no red meat showing inside, so that'll be it for this. Uh, they'll be some, popped inside some bread in a minute. We'll have a shaslik bread sandwich. And in between time, of course I like my desserts, so I'll just put these aside, I'm sort of in the way. I'm just going to drop these on for the moment and let them cook. Now what we've got here is a bit of banana, a bit of oil, brown sugar and a bit of cinnamon. Let them sizzle along there nicely, and I've got myself a dessert for later. Okay, well, we've got our bananas cooked here. I'm going to stick them over here. And there we go. We'll turn it off now. Okay, this is uh, brown sugar with a little bit of cinnamon and a bit of oil browned over the, um, the cooker. And we've got some little friends that have popped along, it looks like, too. They've gone. <laughs> They're on the other side here. My goodness, you're so slow. <laughs> Are they there? They're coming over to get our bananas. <laughs> okay, we're just going to take this off at the moment. You see a bit of uh, oil has come through underneath. Pop that aside in there. We'll just give it a bit of a wipe down. Overall, the performance is quite good. Uh, the heat was very even, which uh, is good. Other barbecues we've had in the past haven't uh, been so good, like you'll get a hot spot and then you get a cold section in the hot spot. This is actually even right across the whole lot. So we're uh, quite impressed with it. And the surroundings might help a little bit too. It's quite nice to get out of the house for a change. And the best part is you don't have to actually look for a barbecue area. You bring your own, which is great. Now once I've done this, I'll just uh, lift it off. Flip off the safeties on both sides. Take out your gas. Don't leave your cylinders in there. Not a good idea if you do. We put our lids back on it, pack up, and away we go. I've uh, decided to go for a bit of a walk. 
and hopefully you'll see why in a second. Right there, see? There, there you go. Little kangaroos come over to watch us. So quite a nice little picnic spot this. Turned out to be quite good. Close up of our little friend that's been watching us have our barbecue over there. So yeah, surprising. I'll just zoom out because I don't want to get too close and scare it. 